Praise God and good afternoon. Bwana Yesu asifiwe na habari ya mchana. Praise God and good afternoon wherever you are. Bwana Yesu asifiwe na habari ya mchana popote pale ulipo. I believe that you are well in the Lord this afternoon. Ninaamini kwamba uko vyema ndani ya Bwana dhuri ya leo. This is the day that the Lord has made. Ni siku ambayo Bwana ameifanya. And it's an honor to be found in his presence this afternoon. Na ni heshima kuu kupatikana uweponi mwake mchana wa leo. Ah we coming live from Cornerstone Faith Assembly. Tunajia moja kwa moja kutoka kanisa la Cornerstone Faith Assembly. And I request you to share this service, to like this service. Ningeomba upende ibada hii na pia kushiriki na watu. And tell us where you're watching us from. Pia utujulishe unatazama kutokea wapi. You can also send your prayer request. Pia unaweza tumba jumbe za ombi and we will be blessed together. Natabarikiwa kwa pamoja. Ah I welcome the band to take us from here. Na wakaribishwa na band watuongoze kutoka hapa. As we worship the Lord this afternoon. Tunapomwabudu Bwana adhuhuria leo. Amen. Amina. Amen. Lord, thank you. Father we exalt you. There is no one like you Jesus. Thank you. We Jesus. have come to testify of your faithfulness. Thank you Jesus. We have come to testify of your goodness dear God in our lives. Like David dear father you want to say that when we were young now we are old dear God you have not seen you forsake us oh God neither have we begged for bread on the roadways dear master so we give you all the praise lamentation says that the Lord great is thy faithfulness oh God and in this day we come to testify of your faithfulness oh God there is no one like you Jesus I am that I am is your name dear God the God who has no shadow of turning that is who you are dear God with whom there is no partiality dear father we exalt you there is no one like you Jesus you deserve all the praise you deserve all the honor and adoration Jesus with your generation to testify of your goodness thank you Jesus because you never fail and you never change oh God
of your faithfulness. We testify that you never change, oh God. Your word says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we testify that you are God by yourself. You are God forever. We train the angels to say that you are holy. You are worthy. Worthy of all praise. Worthy of all of adoration. Worthy of all the Father of all the adoration in this place. We testify of your father. We testify that there is no Jesus, we testify of your voices, the end of every morning, we testify of everlasting love, and nothing in that, we testify of your grace, you are good forever, you are good forever, you never change, if you are faithful yesterday, you remain faithful today, you remain faithful forever, and you are saying that you are the one that should die, have you not said it, dear Lord? And will you not do it, King of all glory? You are never, you are never, never, never going to let you want to go down in vain, dear Father. It's a condition that we just need to do, dear Master. We believe that you never change us. We testify of your ability. We testify of your power. We testify of Jesus, 
Yeah. 
Thank you, President Worship, the band, for that awesome ministration. We don't take it for granted. Wherever you're watching us from, we continue, uh, we continue to invite you. And you want to be your, to be your host today. And this is the time for the ministry of the word. We began with the present worship. 
I want to thank God and our Father who has given us, me and Pastor Amos, the opportunity. We don't take for granted standing every day here to minister to you. And he also ministers to us as we do so to you. We thank God for, I want to thank our spiritual authority, uh, uh, Bishop Dr. Francis Kama, wherever he is. And his family. For this grace. To minister and to be uh, trusted with this ministry. Amen. Let's pray. Atuombe. Our Father and our God, we thank you this day. Baba wetu na mungu wetu, thank you for your goodness. Asanti kwa wema wako. Thank you for your grace. Asanti kwa neema. As we partake of the bread, which is your word. Tunapo mega mkate ulio neno lako. Let us speak what you have spoken. Na tunene kile ambacho umenena. And stay in line with your word. Na tukae uh, kwenye... Uh, he, uh, Luke 24:45 says you open their mind to understand the scriptures. Kama vile neno lako linasema kwamba unafungua mawazo yetu kuweza kuelewa neno. Today that is our prayer. Na hayo ndio maombi yetu leo. That you will open our minds. Kwamba utafungua mawazo yetu that we may understand the scripture. Ili kwamba tuelewe neno. There is no scripture that is too hard with, with the Holy Spirit. Hamna neno lililogumu sana tunapokuwa na Roho Mtakatifu. Amen. Amina. I'm going to read from the book of Hosea. Tasoma kitabu cha Hosea. I will read it then to Samos will have to interpret later. Na kisha tutaendelea na ujumbe. I will begin. Na, nasoma. It says, oh, is oh, uh, Hosea from uh, chapter 14 from verse 1. Hosea kuminane uh, kutokea msari wa kwanza. To verse 9. Hadi msari wa tisa. We can stand those who are in the sanctuary. Na tusimame tulioko katika uh, nyumba ya mungu. And he says. Na inasema hivi. O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, Take away all iniquity, and receive us graciously, so we will render our calves of our lips. Ashur will not save us, we will not re-ride upon horses, neither will we say any more to the work of our hands, ye are our gods, and in thee the fatherless findeth and in, for in thee, the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. For mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall be spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return, shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. Ephraim shall say, what have I done? What, what, what have I to do anymore with idols? I have, heard of, I have heard him and observed him. I am like a green far, far tree. From me is thy fruit found. Who is wise and he sh who is wise and he shall understand these things, prudent and he shall know them, for the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them, but the transgressors shall fall therein. Amen. You may have us those who are in the presence of, in the house. Today I'm going to talk about a, a topic that is very simple. Leo naongea habari ya kichwa ambacho ni rahisi sana. Take with you words. Chukua pamoja nawe neno. As human being we have we, we know words are very important. Kama wanadamu tuwajua kwamba maneno ni ya muhimu sana. What you say unachosema it can affect the person hearing kinaweza kuguzia mtu ambaye anasikiza or it can affect you later when you go and start meditating what you said ama hicho unaweza unachosema kinaweza kuguzia baadaye so words are the most powerful things god gave us maneno ndio kitu cha nguvu sana ambacho mungu alitupatia and they are good na maneno ni mazuri yet they can be so evil and destructive ila yanaweza kuwa maovu na ya kuharibu sana and even how we relate with God. 
hata jinsi ambavyo tunahusiana na Mungu matters so much we, do, we, we go to god and we and we think tunafikiria his god is going to understand our words with god maneno yetu tunayoongea na mungu affects our life yanaguzia maisha yetu and they can cause god to affect us na inaweza kufanya mguzio kutoka kwa mungu kuelekea kwetu so today i'm going to talk to us about leo nitazungumzia habari what hosea told the, the children of, of god kile ambacho hosea alinena na watu wa mungu he said to them aliwaambia o israel Return unto the Lord thy God. For thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. That verse two where my, my message comes from. He told them. Take with you words. When we say take with you. Uh, in English, uh, 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 we are trying to say a little like uh, when, uh, when I, the, the, uh, in the Old Testament, rather, people were told when they were going to the priest to sacrifice. They were told, take with you this and this and this. So that your sacrifice can be accepted. They were told, take with you sheep that is blameless or the, or the lamb or a pigeon if you are, you are poor but they were told take with you exactly and now in verse 2 of Hosea he is telling them take with you words you know when he is telling, he's telling them take with you words and then he tells them and turn to the Lord and say unto him now he, he told them what to take with them which is the word then he tells them to turn to the Lord then he tells them those words that you are going with he tells them what, we, what they shall say and he, he says take away all your iniquity uh, let, me, let me repeat it and he tells them say unto him take away all our in, all iniquity they are telling God eh? and receive us graciously Another version says, bring your petitions and return to the Lord, say to him, forgive all our sins and graciously receive us. So that we may offer you the sacrifice of praise. You see, Hosea is teaching them to go before the Lord with the word. And he tells them, say to him. Then he tells them what to say so they continue to say assure uh, let me read another version it says uh, Assyria shall not save us they are taking with them words so that they can accepted by God in fact the last line of the verse 2 says receive us graciously for we will offer the sacrifices of our lips so as they were taking with them offer sacrifices to the altar of animals 
Walipokuwa basi wanapeleka adhabu zao za wanyama kwenye madhabahu. Here Hosea told them to take to them uh, to take with them words. Hosea anawaambia waende wakiwa na maneno. So that they, they are sacred lips. Ili dhabihu za vinywa vyao they can be accepted. Zikakubalike. And they continue to say with those words that they took they took before the Lord. Na waendelee kusema kwa maneno yale ambayo wamempelekea Bwana. And they continued saying. Na wakaendelea kusema. They were confessing before God. Walikuwa wana 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 confessing Assyria shall not save us we will not ride on horses nor will we say any more to the work of our hands you are our god for in you the fatherless find mercy you may wonder where this message is going God is not speaking to the Gentiles. He is speaking to his church, his own children. That had departed from him. And now when they were carrying words before God, they are telling God the word they depended upon. We know our, our, our strength. And they said, we will not trust in the works of our hands. And we will not say to them, you are our gods. For in you, if fatherless find mercy. When communing or talking to God, our words or what we say matters most. That's why I'm talking about taking with us words. While in prayer or, or in communication with God, we should be careful what we say in the presence of God. God said, I am holy. Therefore, be ye holy. As I am holy. And this includes the words we carry in our, in our prayer closet. With, we say things in our prayer life that God had not said. We go in our prayer closets. We accuse God. We doubt God. We doubt him. Okay, and he says, verse 4, he says, now God is speaking back to the children of Israel. After the words to him, he said, I will heal their backsliding. Another version says, so that you may see what I'm saying, it, is, it, it concerns us. I will heal their faithlessness. I will love them freely. For my anger is turned away from Israel. You see, when we carry words to God, words that matter, most of the time we carry words that do not matter. Have you ever gone to pray? You pray for one hour. After one hour, you think you had carried a truck of 12, uh, 12, 12 wheeler. You, after prayer, you are so tired. It's because in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And in the presence of God, God strengthens us. He, for he said, 
living under the shadow of the almighty but of what I have, have gone ahead of me he says in verse uh, I will look for it okay verse 7 they that dwell under his shadow shall return they shall revive as the corn Na wataweza kuinuka tena kama mumea wa, ma, wa muhaini. So when you go in the presence of God in prayer or in communion with God. Unapoenda kwenye mawasiliano na Mungu. The Bible says they, they, you are revived. Biblia nasema kwamba unahuishwa. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. Wanaoishi kwenye chini ya uvuli wake watarejea. They shall revive as the corn. Wataweza kuhuishwa kama vile mumea. And grow as the vine. And the scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. All this God is saying, after they carried with them words to him, and they petitioned and they confessed their story, they are, with, they are seen. Now God is telling them that who dwells under my shadow you shall revive as corn. And he says and you shall grow as the vine. And the most beautiful thing and the most beautiful thing he says you are sent if they will be as fragrant as the wines of Lebanon. So when to pray, the words that you carry before him, if you come from his presence and you look as though you have carried uh, 10,000 people on your back it means you did not carry the right words in his presence for he has said in verse 7 you shall be revived and you shall be revived our words can affect our faith positively or negatively. Hence causing the power of God not to be the power the power of God to be ineffective. Ineffective I mean when you go to communicate with God or to pray you, we go there ex expecting the word of God and the power of God to, mani to manifest in our lives. So ineffective I mean is not producing any signif significant or desired effect. So what we carry before God let me read Numbers 14. It says, verse 27. Verse 26, God said, and, Moses, and the Lord spoke unto Moses and, 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 and unto Aaron, saying, how long shall I bear with this evil congregation? Which mama against me. How many times do you go in prayer or in communication with God? We carry words. We are supposed to carry words that are good. We mama, but we mama and complain. And we accuse God. And we mama and complain. And complain. And complain. And accuse God. And talk as though God is, does not exist anymore. And God is saying in this congregation, this evil congregation which mama and against me, he said, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they mama against me. Now verse 28, say unto them, 
as truly as I live says the Lord as he have spoken in my ears so will I do to you you see they were talking about death in the wilderness and he told them your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness and all you that were numbered of you according to your whole number that's what God was telling them so it matters the words that we carry before God because these words can either cause our faith to be effective and if our faith is effective the power of God is made manifest in our lives but if our words that we speak causes our faith to be ineffective the word of God will not produce what is supposed to produce when they wait to the, to the Lord with, their, with these words. Hosea told them what to say before the Father. And God said in verse 6, His branches shall spread and His beauty shall be as the olive tree and His smell as Lebanon. It seems Lebanon smells nice. I think the Lebanon of that time was smelling nice. If God can compare the smell of Lebanon with his glory, when we come back, with, when we carry words as sacrifice, because I said to you in verse 2, he talks about when you carry the words and you bring your sacrifice to him. Sacrifice of praise. He's telling us that our, we will smell nice. Ah, we will be smelling nice. And our branches shall spread. And, his, and, he, and he's saying our beauty shall be as the olive tree. Many, a, a long time ago, before I, was, before I was born again, I used to see intercessors coming from prayer. Even if you're an unbeliever, you will know they came from prayer. And they were fasting, you will know. Their lips were so dry, and they had this very serious face the face that even imejikunja to show they, are they were in prayer but the Hosea is telling us you will look you will, the beauty of God shall be as our olive as the olive tree so you will wonder what were they telling God so they came looking so ugly like that because when I read the book of Hosea he's telling me if I dwell in his presence uh, I, my beauty shall be as the olive tree and I will smell nice in high school the CU guys when they were praying I used to oppose uh, the, the, the things of God in high school especially because of what I saw from them you will know they were praying they were having cracks on their faces for they will not even drink water because they are fasting they will not oil themselves so we wonder was talking to God a spiritual warfare. Because the way they are coming out is like they've been, they've been torn. That discouraged us from getting, uh, giving our lives to Christ. Hosea says in verse 7, they that dwell under his shadow, I read it before, 
They shall revive us the coin. coin. Uh, uh, another version says, My people will return again to the safety of their land. They will flourish like grain. And and blossom like grapevines. They will be a, they will be as a frag, as, they will be as fragrant as the vines of the, of Lebanon. This is the grace of believers today. With our fragrancy, so when it is spreads, it smells nice. When Jesus came, he took away our sin so that we can be smelling nice. And our, 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 in the book of Solomon, he says our word should drip forth like honey before God. The honey. And now, when, in high school, when you looked at them, you did not see any honey in them. Or even in their conversation. It was a physical manifestation of righteousness. Though they were born again, I will not judge them. But the presence of God, when we carry good words before God, God has said what will happen to us. The words that we carry before God, they matter most. If we go murmuring and complaining, you will come out broken and tired. But when you, when you go forth boldly, in, in Psalms chapter 2, let me show you what the psalm is saying. There are different kinds of a, there, there are different kinds of ways of carrying taking with you the word. Taking with you words before God. The first one they were when, when, what, in Hosea I have spoken of what they did, they repented. After the second one says let me read a scripture here. It says, mm -hmm. Verse 2 of Hosea, the message Bible says, prepare your confession and come back to God. Let me look another one. Okay, let me read it first. Some, uh, I was talking about the, co the confession. In Psalms, Psalms chapter 2, the psalmist says, No, I will start with verse 7. He says, Anasema. Listen what the psalmist he is carrying words before God. Anabeba neno mbele za mungu words that are nourishing, words that are going to drip like honey. He says, I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. When we carry with us the word, when we carry with us words, we should classify the words that we are carrying before God. So that we don't fall into sin. And say which God, what God did not say. God, did God, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So you are carrying words and asking God, why have you left me? Why have you forsaken me? You see, you have accused God falsely. And God said, Do not be a false witness against your neighbor. Now you, you have, over, you have overtaken your neighbors and people. Now you are becoming a false witness against God. 
Take with you words. The psalmist says, I will proclaim the decrees of the Lord. Then he says, which is the decree? What, is, what, what the decree says? He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Then, then God said, ask of me I will make the nations your inheritance. When you take with you words which are fragrance and sacrifice before God, you should be careful what you are saying. One time I was listening to a man of God and he said something that caught my attention and he changed my life completely. He said, one time he was kneeling beside his bed. He was kneeling on his bed. And he was in prayer. And he was praying. For one hour, he prayed so hard. But as he was praying, he came out of his body. And he descended. And he started to realize he's seeing darkness. And he descended. And descended. He started to smell some uh, smell that is so stinky. Very smelling so bad. And he was in this darkness. And he said this darkness you cannot describe it describe it in this world that we are living in. And he was descending. As, was, as he was descending, he was hearing himself pray. And the more he prayed, the more he descended to hell. Then he remembered. And he said, But I'm a son of God. I'm born again. I'm redeemed. I'm the righteousness of God. What is happening? Because of those words, he was taken back instantly and in, taken back in his body. When he woke up, he was panting so hard. He was panting so hard. And he realized because he was praying negative prayers and he was complaining before God. So he was descending to hell. Then he said one thing. Not everybody that dies in their prayer closet they go to heaven. Some in their prayer closet they criticize God. They mama. They doubt him. So they descend to hell. So God told him, whenever you pray negative prayers and speak negative before my presence, when you think you are serving me, you will be descending. When you die, you will go to hell. And God told him, if you had not spoken the right words, but I am born again. I am the righteousness of God. Those words, they arrested him from going to hell and took back to where he belonged. So today I came to talk to us. Take with you words. This word as your sacrifice. This word as what they cause us to be accepted before God. And we will win. And we shall not be destroyed. As I'm finishing, I want us to continue to remind us when we take word of God, even the word of giving, take with you this word and tell it to him of giving and of any sacrifice and we will see the hand of God working in our lives let us be watchful 
what kind of word we take before God. Not every word is acceptable, is living before the presence of God. Amen. I'm so grateful that you listen to us. We hope and we know we have blessed you and encouraged you. Now I want to give us the opportunity to give. We cannot end the worship service without giving. Giving completes the service. It is not paying the service that we have given you. It is standing with the ministry to continue giving forth the uh, ministering to you and ministering to the Lord. So you can minister to God in various ways. You can minister in what, the way, the, what we are doing me and Pastor Amos. And we minister to you. And then you can minister to God by giving and honoring your pledges and your sacrifices. And the God of all grace shall bless whatever you touch. If you want to give your life to Christ, there is a number there. You can call it anytime. And we shall lead you to Christ. In Jesus' name. And at the bottom of your screen, there are various ways on how you can give. Choose any mean of digital giving that you want to give through. And you, you, the, the gift shall reach the church. That is the only approved way of giving according to this ministry. There is no any other way. And no any other person can receive from for us. In Jesus name. Let's pray. Our Father and our God we thank you. Thank you for reminding us that we may take words to with, with us. And this word should be the words that nourish and bring forth faith. We thank you, Father, for forgiving us any previous things that we have said that are not good in your presence. And let not anything that you said negative come to pass in our lives. Let your glorious word manifest in us. And let us be victorious in all all areas of our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to remind us about the services on Sunday. We have three services. You can choose the ones you feel comfortable with. There is the first service at 8 a.m. There is the second service at 10 a.m. And the 12 p.m. And when we meet on Sunday, may God bless you. And now let us finish with the grace. May the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of our Father forever and ever.